Okay, this is lesson three, unit or unit three, lesson one. Welcome to this one because we're going to start talking about angles today. So things are just going to start getting a little bit more interesting every time. So let's take a look at this. For angle fundamentals, this is a lot of definitions, but here's what goes on. An angle is an object formed by two rays with a common end point. So this means that you have two rays that are joined at the, that are actually start at the same point. And because they start at the same point, then the distance between them becomes an angle as they move out. Okay, this is a picture of one. Notice that they have a vertex. The vertex is where the end point is for both rays. Okay, these are some angle naming conventions because when you have an object like this, you have to be able to refer to it. So in geometry, we have these particular ideas and this is the way we name these angles. Okay, the sides of the angle are ray AB and ray AC. That's called the sides. The vertex is at A, that is where it starts. And the two acceptable names of the angle using three letters are angle BAC or angle CAB. As it notes here, the vertex is always the middle letter whenever you have it named with three letters like this. Okay. Another little glitch here. We'll get moved past this. The one letter way of naming this angle would be just simply angle A. Okay, sometimes we can use that, sometimes we can't. Depends on whether we're going to confuse anybody. Okay, so they want us to name all of the angles that are shown here using the three letter names. Okay, so the first one we have is angle BAC, which is the big one, and then we have BAD, which is this one, and we have angle DAC, okay? So that's the three angles that are actually here in this, in this diagram. Okay, they want to know why it's not able to use the single letter convention to name these angles, and here's where the problem comes in. If I call this angle A, I'm not going to know which one of these three angles that I'm actually talking about. So that's important when you have a situation like this that you use the three letter angle name. Okay? And that's simply because A is the vertex for all of these because if you notice, A is the middle letter of all three. So just calling it angle A is not going to be able to differentiate as to which of the three angles you're talking about. Okay, an angle always lies in a plane and it creates three separate parts, the interior, the exterior, and the points along the two rays are the sides of the angle. Okay, example two, here's what we have with this. They want us to name a labeled point that is on the interior to angle PQR, which is the big angle. So point S is the answer to that question. Okay, they also want us to name a labeled point that is exterior to angle PQS. So we find angle PQS, so the only point that showed up here that's on the exterior would be at point R. And then they also want us to name a labeled point that is exterior to point to angle RQS. So RQS is this angle right here. So point P is the one that's not interior to it or on it. All right, here's some more definitions. The measure of this angle, A, in degrees is represented by M in front of the name. So the measure of angle A would be written this way. Okay? The angle addition postulate says that if point S is on the interior of angle PQR, as shown here, then the two small angles, these two right here, have to add up to the total of the big angle. Okay, and that just simply comes up and is represented this way algebraically. The measure of angle PQS plus the measure of angle SQR is equal to the measure of angle PQR. 
Okay, in this drawing, they want us to find the measure of angle PQR if the measure of angle PQS is equal to 17 degrees and the measure of angle SQR is equal to 32 degrees. So what we do is we add those together, just like we talked about a minute ago. So the measure of the big angle is equal to the measures of the small angles added together because they're both in part inside of the big angle. So this gives us 17 degrees, which was PQS, and it also gives us 32 degrees, which was SQR. When we add those together, the big angle has to measure 49 degrees. Okay, angles, for example, angle A, they're classified according to size. This is something you should already know. This is, if the measure of angle A is equal to 90 degrees, then it's a right angle. If it's equal to 180 degrees, then it's a straight angle. And if it's less than 90 degrees, then it's an acute angle. And if it's greater than 90 degrees, it's an obtuse angle. Okay, congruent angles, these are just simply mean that you have more than one angle that has the same measurement. Okay, if they have the same measurement, they are congruent. That means that you could take one, set it on top of the other one, and it would be absolutely perfectly matched. Okay, so if the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B, then we know that A, angle A, is congruent to angle B. Notice that we don't have the measure here when we're talking about the object. When we're talking about the object, we have the geometric relationship of congruency. If we're talking about the measurement, the actual number that's associated, we use the, the symbol equals, okay? This symbol right here is the symbol for congruence. Okay, angle bisectors. Okay, this is simpler to what we did with the uh, segment bisectors, but if the ray AB is the bisector of this angle CAD, then angle CAD is cut into two equal pieces, or bisected, okay? And it's represented this way. Notice that we've got marks on these arcs right here that tell us that those two are congruent, okay? So they're telling us that the measure of angle CAB is equal to the measure of angle BAD. So this means this angle is the same as this angle. So that's what they're telling us here. They're telling us that the, with the diagram, if they have these marks on here, that that means that those two angles are congruent, whether they tell you anything else about it or not. Okay, example four says if angle RPT is bisected by ray PQ, they want you to find x when the measure of RPQ is equal to 2x minus 7 and the measure of angle QPT is equal to x plus 9. Use x to find the angle measurement of the whole thing, okay? Or actually the small one, QPT, okay? So let's take a look here. They're telling us these two are equal. So that means that this expression and this expression are equal to each other. Okay, so that way we can solve for x. So what they're telling us is the measure of these two angles are the same. So we substitute the expressions for each in here. That give, when we solve it, we subtract the x from both sides. Then we add the 7 to both sides. So this gives us 2x minus x equals 9 plus 7. So x is equal to 16. Okay, we're not finished yet because what we need to do is we need to take the 16, put it right back in here to find what they ask us to find. Okay, so what we do is we take the measure of angle QPT is equal to X plus 9, substitute the 16 in, gives us 16 plus 9, so that measurement of this small angle right here is 25 degrees. Since we know they're congruent, this one up here is also 25 degrees, and we could actually extend it to say that the big angle then is 50 degrees. All right, that finishes it up. So come see us on Monday. Monday we'll be ready to look at this in a little bit more detail in class. So if you have questions about it, uh, 
you get to post it when you get here and put it on the parking lot and we'll clear it up before we start. Thank you very much. Have a great rest of the weekend. Goodbye.